Hello, hello, how are you all doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the sofa. Welcome back to the damn sofa. Y'all, before we get started, drop a one in the comments if you can hear me so that, that way I don't keep talking. And then it turns out that my mic's off or something that would be very simple for most people. But for me, it ain't. Okay, let's just, let's just be real honest about it, okay? We don't have to pretend it's anything more than that, okay? I'm just not good at some things, okay? Um, I hope everybody's doing well. And first and foremost, everybody, send love, light, healing, prayers, thoughts, whatever your thing is. Whoop, right here. To Emily, our moderator, she is not well. She's on the mend. Um, so she's here with us. She's just going to be hanging out. Uh, hello, Emily. I see you there. Uh, I appreciate you even being here, Emily. So we love you, and I hope you feel better. And and that's that. And Chrissy Lee, uh, also shout out to you. She's back home from the hospital. Hallelujah. Glad to see you here. Uh, and I'm, <clears throat> pardon me, and I'm glad to see everybody else here. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, let me get back to my thing over here and get to y'all where I can see you in real time. There you go. Okay. So, hello, finally, Larn. Hey, Barb. Hey, Anita. Hey, Leanne. Hey, Debbie. Murder Nerd. How's it going? Hey, Chris. Hey, April. Hey, Diana. Hey, Gia. Hey, Huma Fox. Carol. Diva Time. What's going on? Hey, Tracy. Woohoo! I'm glad you made it. Yay! How's everybody doing? Hey, Blingin! Blingin' with Kimberly. Hey, Isabel! Y'all, 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 I should say I brought this job and not paid attention to all the Jesus. Yeah, so, Barb, you and I are on the same page. <laughs> you and I are on the same page. First of all, let me just tell y'all this. So, for those who, let me do my little spill first. Okay, so if you are brand new to this channel, this is my podcast channel, basically the live chat channel. I also have my main channel, uh, it's the link should be down in the description below. Uh, it's more edited videos, that type of stuff. Over here we go live. If you're coming from the main channel to here, make sure you sub to this channel because YouTube makes it very hard and difficult to just type the name of this channel in and it comes up. It always goes to my other channel, uh, but they are two separate channels. So just make sure you're subbed to both by just looking on there. Also, if you're coming in from the link that I posted like on Patreon for y'all over there, uh, make sure you click the YouTube icon so you can come in here to the live chat if you want to talk to us. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. You can just do your thing, good Lord. Um, so there's that. Now, what we're doing today is we are covering the Pike County Murders documentary. Um, that's kind of what we do with these documentaries here. We I watch them. I make notes on my phone. I just go down as I watch it and boom, 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 boom. And then we come here and kind of read through it and talk about it and chat. Um so there's that. Now, I will give a pre-clude, pre-warning. Hey, Derek, how's it going, everyone? Welcome, Derek, to the sofa. Uh, Derek was sick, too. He's doing better, hopefully. I mean, everybody's been coming down with something. Y'all just stay safe out there. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so the Pike County murders. If you followed this case, then you will know. And you watch this documentary. Let me turn my fan on. You will know. This barely skims the surface of this case, y'all. Okay, this was, it's still going on. Okay, incredibly complicated case that has span, spun over years. This, so this does not do it any justice. I'm just here to say that. Now, it's a decent documentary, and I'm not trying to trash it, but I'm just letting you know that if you watch this and followed it verbatim, this is child's play to you. This document, you're going to be like, What? What I did feel was good with the documentary was this was it gave you more context of per of, and I don't know how to say this right. Um, making bringing to life the victims and the scenario that went on behind everybody in the relationships you know what i'm saying like i don't know how to explain it, but just hearing from the family members and this one's you know this this one's a uh, fiance and this brother over here it just gave it more context so i was like oh okay this was like that kind of texture i was looking for that i might not have gotten from the trial and that type thing um but again there's tons of, it really didn't even go into much about the grandmother you know what i'm saying so thanks archie rjb um so you see what i mean so there's that so just know that um 
however, it was good, right? So, anyways, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through it. Also, the first thing we are doing is we are going over the damn family tree. Okay, a couple of them. Half of this case is figuring out like, okay, who's who and this one and that one and this one and that one. It's crazy. Not that going over the family tree is going to help us much, but it will let us kind of give some context of this is who's who in this scenario, right? Because it was near impossible. I was like, I can't do, like, there's no 60-second overview in this case, right? It's so complicated, and there's so many people involved. And so going through, I just gave up trying to keep track. I was like, I can't. I'm just going to have to do a very beginning, like, this is who's who, just know that's who we're dealing with. So, in fact, let me find the first thing I want to put up here. Please hold. Thank you. Okay, let's do this. Let's do the Wagners versus the Rodums. This is essentially what this came down to. At its heart, this has been sold, if you will, this case from the state and all that, as a custody battle situation. To me, it was that at its heart, but many other layers of stuff going on, much of which comes back to Angela, uh, Angela Wagner. Okay, let me go to my screen to share before I start talking about these names. Hold on. I'm already ready to just jump into it. Okay, hold on. Where is she present? And where is sheer screen? And where is sheer screen? Okay. Uh-huh. That's right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I said that's right. Uh-huh. Okay, let me see if y'all have seen the same thing. Okay, here we go. So I don't know if you can see this well. Let me see. Let's do this. Um, and let me go back over here. Okay, so on the left hand, we have the Wagners. On the right, we have the Rodents. At its essence, the Wagners slaughtered the Rodin family. Took like eight of them out. That's the 60-second overview, okay, <laughs> if, you, if you're not familiar with this case. So starting on the left, we have the Wagners, George Billy Wagner III, who is husband and wife, or you know what I'm saying, and Angela Wagner, their husband and wife. Go down, you see George Wagner IV, and then you see Edward Jake Wagner. Okay, now that's them. They were all finally arrested, and I will just say this just so you know we will get into it. Jake is at the center of this with the custody thing. His brother, George, you know, was at the center of it too or whatever, but it's Jake's kid is what I'm getting at. Angela seems to be a mastermind manipulator of everybody. They are all currently in prison. They have all been sentenced except for Billy, the father. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, he hasn't pled out or anything, has he? I should have even, I should have Googled that because I just went by the documentary, but that was my memory too. Let me look up here and see what his thing says on oh, Billy Wagner. That, not the baseball guy, low word. Twenty twenty four. so he has not, yeah. So here we go. Um, now let me get back to y'all. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. So we'll get more in depth as to that, but that's like a quick overview of the Wagners and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. Angela, George, Edward, sentence, all testifying against each other, all flipping, Billy still has to go to trial, and he's taking a trial. He doesn't want to take a deal. Okay, the rodents. So go over here at the top, starting from the left to the right. Now, you see where it says a D underneath represents deceased. So we have Dana Roden, ex so Dana and Christopher Roden Sr. They are ex-husband and wife. They are both deceased. Then if you go to the right of Christopher, his brother Kenneth Roden is deceased. And then if you go down, their cousin, Gary Roden is deceased. Now let's go back over to the left to Dana and Christopher, their nuclear family, if you will. So down there we have Hannah Roden, deceased. Christopher Roden Jr., deceased. Pardon me. Clarence Frankie Roden, deceased. Now you see beneath here, you see the children. So if you look over here, how, what connects the Wagners and the Rodens? The two-year-old between Jake and Hannah. 
So this is the, the baby that connects the family, and this is what a lot of the drama went over. Now, Hannah also has another baby who was four days old at the time of her murder. Go to the right. Clarence Frankie Roden, three years old at the time of the crime, son. Now, the children are alive. Then go between Frankie and Hannah Gilly, six months old at the time of the crime, son. So, the, again, the children were all fine. The children were okay. It was everybody else that wasn't. Okay. Now, let's just pause for a second here. Let's come back over here. Okay, so... I know that's incredibly complicated. It is what it is. Um, it's a very complicated case. And Jackie says, I remember I live in Ohio. And now also, everybody, just so you know, if you're new here or whatever, if you're coming from one channel or the other, this is my live chat channel. So I stop, I talk, I read comments. It's that kind of vibe. I will make a... Um, a consolidated edited version of this video it will be strictly based on the series and what we saw there that kind of a thing i do believe that stephanie harlow um and i cannot think of his name derek uh for crime weekly their podcast their the, the not stephanie Trump, but the podcast did something on this i just saw i think they've been posted earlier today where sh they do one of their deep deep dives in it so if you're looking for that check stephanie harlow and him out um i'll post an edited version of basically this right here which is like the cliff notes from the thing in our discussion of it so there's that okay so let me get to the beginning here Marshall says it's just literally, yeah. I just when I when I so when I googled the thing on the other page, I saw Stephanie's face on her thing or thumbnail. Just goes to show, putting your face in the thumbnail, and I was like, oh, the Pike Damascus. I was like, Stephanie did it, so you know it's major deep dive into this, which is what this case requires. Like that's why when I was like, okay, they did a documentary on this. I was like, how are they going to do like maybe a two hour documentary on this because it's so in depth right i mean again it goes over years of time and the relationships and the complicatedness and again like once we get through this you'll see like they didn't even put anything about the grandmother in this you know what i'm saying like there was like all these other outliers of manipulate hey Dwayne, of manipulative stuff going on in this family that just wasn't in there but it's almost like to do a quick little documentary you can't right so anyways um Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. So like we just said uh, over the thing, you know, it opens up, it kind of gives you a little overview. Jake Wagner fathered a child with Hannah Roden. Billy Wagner's the father. Angela Wagner's the mother. George Wagner's the brother. Okay, episode one is, is titled Bound by Blood. This is Pike County, Ohio. Now, it starts off, we're listening to a young lady talk about the shock that she was in over eight family members being murdered. And she's placing a marker on a grave for Hannah. Um, something says that she lost herself that day and that she'll never be the same. So she's basically saying, like, you know, this was life-changing for these people. You know, their friends, their family. In more than one way, because also one thing you're dealing with is some of the family members in this that are related to the Wagners that stood by them in the beginning and were like, they wouldn't do this. Like, you know, they were these fam these people were very good friends, these family. They fished together. They did all this kind of stuff together. I mean, so that's why people just didn't believe it. They were like, what? You know, there's no way this is a, this has to be a cartel thing or whatever. So it's devastating, not only the loss, but the betrayal to learn, like, not only did, it gives me goosebumps, not only did you do this, but I mean, we're talking, you, y'all are killing your best friends. Oh, Chrissy, I just saw your thing. I'm sorry. Um, oh, thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate it. And again, welcome. I'm glad. Welcome back home. I'm glad you're home and hopefully healing at, at home and out of the hospital. Um, Okay, so continuing on to the next bullet point, uh, it says eight family members, four locations, execution style, and, and one night. All the children were left alive. We've already covered that. Uh, now, it shows the Dogwood Festival in the beginning. It's very wholesome, and the murders took place as this festival started. And one thing for me that this did is watching this, it gave me a sense of the community of the area, the time of the space, right? This is very apple pie America you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of thing, right? So a scenario like this going down 
you could realize like the gravity of it in this area. This wasn't like a town that was used to much violence at all. Probably some drug drama, stuff like that, but something like this that was literally like, oh my God, am I bleeding? Like next level, they're, they're not. This was you know, very abnormal. Um, so Chris Stone uh, and hold on, let me say it. Chris Stone wrote and a family member says, so Chris Stone, another family member said that this is a very wholesome town. People trust each other. People know each other. They help their neighbors out. This just kind of paints a picture of where everything's at. Um, now they talked to a local small reporter there uh, and she said that she's never reported on anything like this at all. I mean, she's literally like, you know, I report on things like, you know, Grandma Sue's news recipe right like that's news in this town okay uh she's like this you know this is unheard this is movie stuff right and it, it would be for most i mean if that happened here i mean and there's crime that goes down here and that would be shocking right okay please help okay so bobby Bobby Joe arrives at the property to take care of the dogs. Now, what we're talking about now is we're moving to the discovery of the victims, right? Um, so, goes up, a door is locked, which was odd. So, she gets in and she realizes that something really horrible has happened. They play the 911 call and it's so bad, right? Um, she is very upset and they're basically like, okay, get out of the house. Cause she's like, there's blood everywhere, you know, hold on. frozen, frozen. Oh, okay. Hold on. Wait, am I back? Can y'all hear me? Hello. I wish I could sit. So t let me know when y'all can hear me and we're like back on. Um, okay, so are we are we going again? Okay. I wish I could see the picture. Did somebody screenshot it? <laughs> I don't even look at my, at my thing and it was, um I didn't see it. Okay, so we're back. Okay, cool. Okay, good. Thank y'all. I was like, oh God, I'm going to have to go restart the uh, reboot because it showed I had internet. That's what was weird. Um, I was like, my internet strength's fine and we're connected. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to reboot and start the live over. And, well, you know how that is. Lord mercy. I mean, it was not expect. Um, please hold. Okay. Well, now, you know, my mojo is just all thrown off now. Okay. Oh, thank you, Gia. Okay. Let me see here. So let's start back at this one paragraph. Okay. So we're going to start back because I don't know what time we froze at. So we're going to start back at where Bobby Joe goes to the house and realizes all the victims are there. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
whatever happened. So she goes over there. She's going to take care of the dogs and she gets there and the door is locked, which is like not normal. Um, and so she's like, what? Well, she finally gets in and it's like, uh, this bad stuff happened. And so she calls 911 and they play the 911 phone call. And it's like, oh my God, it is, it gives me goosebumps right now. I mean, it was so bone chilling here and how upset she was. Well, they're like, look, get out of the house, right? Like, we don't know what's going on in there or whatnot. So she gets it's out now one thing to remember and you know what let me see if i can pull this up for those who haven't seen it um roden family property pictures let's do images let's see here yes here we go please help please help. here's a good one here's a well is this one um this is a better one this is a better one okay let me get it pulled up to where it's a big photo where'd the photo go we don't know old well you know i mean i had it up and then it goes away and i just you know i mean i don't know what to do these days y'all so we're just gonna go back to over to here we're just gonna get rid of this we're just gonna come over here we're gonna come back to y'all and share the picture present so what i'm getting ready to do is just show you give you an idea of this property right um let me make sure you see the same thing as me there you go okay so you see the picture there to the right the one that's kind of big this is the property so she's showing up you see there's one mobile home there's like a, a couple of dwellings there are cars everywhere you see all the cop cars and whatnot so she goes to one place and this is where she realizes oh my god she they're dead right like something horrible has gone on 911's like you need to get out you need to save yourself uh kind of a thing so she gets out she runs to the other house to check on the family members so she goes there and the three-year-old answers the door well you already know she's like um okay now, can you imagine up she's upset hey other family and all them are dead over here right so the three-year-old says the daddy is playing zombie in the bedroom. You already know. She goes and checks, and Frankie Roden and Hannah Gilly are, Gilly are dead. Now, the six-month-old is alive and laying in between them, covered in blood. Okay? This is the horrifying part of it. You know what it reminded me of is Dexter. Um, oh, hold on. Let me go. So I'll, I'll go let me go look at that. Thank you, Jenny. Um, Jenny posted the picture on Patreon chat. Hold on, I want to go look at it. I want to see what y'all are talking about. Please help. <laughs> that is funny. Oh my god, I can't believe it froze there. Yeah, I was getting all up in and out. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so she goes over there and is is gone from bad to worse, right? Now, Dana Roden is found in a rear bedroom. So it's now what they do is the documentary starts going over all the victims and how they were found in their homes and all this kind of stuff, right? So Dana Roden is found in the rear bedroom at her place. Chris Roden, her son, who is 16 years old, is found in his bedroom. Hannah Roden is in her room dead. Now, she had given birth to a baby just a few days before to a daughter. And the daughter is still alive and laying next to her covered in blood. Now, we're going to talk more about what Jake said happened in those moments um, once he gets on the stand and does all that stuff because it's more hard. This is horrible, right? And it's absolutely completely horrible. It gets worse when we get more details. So just brace yourself. Okay. So let's continue on. So the governor, they show interview the governor. He does an interview. He talks about how bizarre and awful it is. I mean, that's the level of this crime where you're getting the government mayor. I mean, everyone's stepping in and being like, uh, this, this is bad. Right. Um, so Hannah Roden had a baby with Jake Wagner Jake lived with his parents and brother George. So remember, the parents is George, not George, the George brother, George. Dad. Billy is the father, uh, middle name, nickname, whatever. Um, Angela's mother. So Jake lived and told a friend that this was the worst thing he'd ever been through. And he didn't know how he was going to tell his baby girl about this. He got full custody of the baby girl after the murder. So keep this in mind. So remember, he did now nobody knows at this time right the documentary is kind of giving you this lens of 
through people who didn't really know what took place and whatnot. And all they know is the rodents are dead. Jake has a baby with, you know, Hannah. Some of the family members are really like best friends. So no one's really going to be thinking that the Wagners killed them all. Right. I mean, this is that severe. So Jake, you know, Oh God, what am I going to tell our baby girl? We'll wait till we get to the confessions. And then you think back to this where you're like, what? Like how, what kind of monster are you? Okay. So, Jake Wagner was at the funeral. George Wagner, Billy Wagner were outside the funeral home. So all these people that will end up now serving prison time over these murders are going through the motions. They're going to the funeral. They're doing all the stuff, right? So the Wagner, now I'm just, some of this we've already gone over, but again, it's just the notes that I did in the way that it presents the information. So the Wagners are connected because of Hannah and Jake's daughter together. People were afraid that something would happen to them and they kind of utilize this to their benefit. And as we get deeper into this and they move away and all this type of stuff, this is a narrative that they will use. It's like, we're afraid for our own lives. What, like what happened, you know, look at what happened to the rodents. They could be coming after us you know the whole time knowing ain't nobody coming to look for them except maybe the police right so please hold now a familiar face in this documentary is angela angela levy 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 uh from Law and Crime Network is in there. She did extensive coverage of the story. And so I thought that was kind of cool to see a familiar face like that. If you follow Law and Crime, then you'll be you'll be familiar with her. Okay, so the detective says that the kids being left alive was a clue, and then they start looking at Jake Wagner because the whole thing is is it was odd and not in a bad way. Obviously, it's a blessing from God that the children they spare the children's lives, but it's odd that this level of violence took place and the children were not harmed, right? Uh, it's just kind of like, hmm, you know, like what's, what's this say? So they start talking to or looking at Jake Wagner. Now, when Jake and Hannah first met, Jake, she was only 13 years old. He was like, I think 17, something like that. I mean, he was much older um, than her. Um, she moves into the Wagners. Now, for those of you who have been following my conversations with these different documentaries that we've been watching, keep in mind Goodnight Sugar Babe, I believe, or Sugar Bear, Sugar Babe. I can't remember which one the name of it was. We watched it recently. This is so similar, this energy. Um, it very much reminded me of this. Um uh, this case, they, they just really reflect each other. Um, so, Hannah moves in there. The Wagners and the Rodents were a good friend. Many different family connections between each of the families. We covered that. The Wagners were known around town as like the rich people, basically. Frederica is the grandmother, and she spoiled them all. Now, this is the part, and in fact, while we're here, let's pause for a second. Um, Frederica... Oh, what? Hold on, let me find it. So, oh wait, I want to share this. And where'd y'all go? Streaming, I'm going to share the screen with you. Again, you can't really get to completely deep into the story in a two-hour documentary. It's just, it's not possible to go all the way deep the way that this case is. Whoops, sorry, that was me. I pressed the wrong button. Really technically challenged today, y'all. Wagner matriarch share y'all seeing the same thing as myself okay so let me just go over here so you see this lady this is the grandmother here pike county murders wagner matriarch wants off wrongful death lawsuit filed by the rodents um she wants to be removed from a wrongful death uh lawsuit lots of people so see right here she was originally criminally charged in the case but the state dropped the obstruction and perjury charges in 2019 prosecutor said she lied to investigators and a grand jury about two bulletproof vests found in her home so again we're talking a very grimy family here right but she had money and the family had money you know lots of property this kind of a thing um Frederica and her husband had a successful horse business and they own lots of rental properties, this type thing. So there was, you know, in this little tiny town, they had a lot of pool, a lot of power, that type of stuff. They were probably used to getting their way. And so when it comes down time for custody and things of this nature, you know, 
it's it is what it is um i know angel angeli says it's amazing that freddie wagner was worth four million dollars and stayed in that county why didn't she move her family out and get them educated it is you know with all that money it's so strange and one of the people or several people in the docu series will say about angela we'll get into her in a little bit what did she see in billy um billy wagner and whatnot because he's and he's a little bit he's rough right and they're like uh hello money <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i mean there you go that's your meal ticket right there um so there's that oh thank you Dwayne. you're doing so sweet and gifting people memberships that's so sweet Dwayne. okay where are we at here i did that okay so there we are okay so Jake was apparently very controlling over Hannah. Now we'll get more in depth into the, the level of control that went on in this household that stemmed from Angela and the whole way that this little family, the Wagners, the four of them, the mom, dad, and the two brothers operated. Um, it's a lot of toxicity, y'all. It's just, it's very, very, very toxic. Um, okay, so at the scene of the crime, now keep this in mind, one of the things that will end up being... Um, Murder nerd. <laughs> Me gun. Lord, girl, I thought that too. Uh, <laughs> so they find these shoe prints at the, um, what do you call it, at the scene of the crime. And they start investigating and they figure out that there is a Walmart that sells these shoes. This is the only place you can get these shoes at, right? Um, so they know, and these shoes are brand new. These shoes were purchased to commit this crime in, okay? So that's what went down here. And the huge thing, now also let this be a lesson, right? Of first and foremost, if every one of these damn cases does not come back down to Walmart, okay, I don't know if law enforcement it, it puts damn Walmart in their payroll at this point. They should, okay? They really should. I'm not complaining, okay, because it helps bring so much justice. Um, it's just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind, right? And especially how they were able to do this. Where they're talking about, these are brand new shoes, you only get them at Walmart? I mean, come on. That's the other thing, too. Like, if you were going to do this, but your options were probably little limited. I'm trying to think if you actually had the forethought to be like, okay, we're going to really plan this out. You know, oh, thank you, Emily. Emily gifted five uh, five people memberships. Thank you, Emily. Um, and thank you, Nirvana. I don't know why everybody buys their kit at Walmart, but they do. Hold on, let me put that up there because it's so true. So if you were going to go buy your kit, right, your murder kit is what we call them here, right? Unless Walmart was your only option, I would be like, surely that would be the last place I need to go. Number one, camera surveillance footage, right? I mean, period, end of damn story, okay? Um, like, that alone would have me saying no, okay? Secondly, like, oh, I'm going to go get these shoes. But then also you could look at it like so many people might have those. It would make the odds in your favor. But then the second that they know, oh, hey, look, we got these shoes. Let's start pulling those cameras. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, well, here we go. And that's exactly what will happen. Thank you, Miss Independent My Way. I appreciate appreciate it. Walmart is always at the center of these damn cases. Always. Always. I'll never get over the case where the two dudes went to Florida. And, oh, thank you, Leanne. She gifted one membership. And bought souvenirs at damn Walmart and along the way. And I can't remember the, and the poor woman who they killed. It was horrible and senseless. And they just, they were the, they, they're what I always think of with Walmart because there was absolutely zero reason for them to go to Walmart. And they literally were like buying just stupid shit. Oh, now Derek, hold on. Now I'm not trying to advocate, trying to figure out how to do the perfect crime here, but you got to admit, if you're going to go do some crime, why not go to the thrift shop? You're going to have somebody else's DNA, right? But they don't think of that terms. It's like they all run to Walmart where everything's on video. It absolutely blows my mind, right? So anyways, so that's enough about that. Okay, so they know that the shoes came from Walmart and they're brand new. So keep that file that away. Okay, so they also discover that there is a marijuana grow operation going on in these properties, right? Um, 
and so this is going on they see this well at this point they're like well wait a minute maybe this is a drug thing right maybe this is a cartel thing and i could completely see that um then there are talks about billy wagner selling drugs for the rodents and they go they scoop billy up by surprise and interview him right so remember billy is the dad billy wagner's the dad and this whole thing starts coming out and there was big drug deals going on between like teaming up with the family and whatnot and we'll get to that in one second i'm kind of jumping ahead but when this starts filtering around the cops just by surprise go pick billy up and they're like hey boy come on down to station billy yeah boy and so they go down there and billy's like look y'all are barking up the wrong damn tree they're coming out of the family like this is just not even what's going on right um and he tells this big story about all these big weed shipment this chris was going to be getting well he wasn't really lying but it was him and chris right um and it was causing this upload in the drug dealer community and you know he's really painting this picture out to make it look like a drug dealer got pissed off at chris well the reality is is that chris and billy were involved in this 800 grand drug deal right i mean this crazy stuff um Everybody was like, Billy was the type that was always planning and always scheming. This was just what he did. Now, this is when it fast forward. We were talking about what did Angela see in Billy and whatnot. And everybody's like, money, money, money. That's why she got with him. I mean, even his like nephew or whoever is like, look at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, come on. Okay. So... Um, and now we're going back to 2017, although this is like fast forward in this time, but you know what I'm saying. So the Wagners are planning on leaving Ohio and they move to Alaska where it's very secluded. Um, and no one really thought anything of this because they'd always thought like this is like a bucket list for them. They always wanted to move to Alaska and do this. And this is when they're also utilizing the whole thing of like we're afraid for our lives. What if somebody comes and does this like you see what happened over here to the rodents i mean we're so close with them this could happen to us so again people aren't really batting an eye at this they you know behind the scenes cops are questioning this and questioning that there might be some like mm, what's what's going on here but there's also just going to be there has to be i would assume a level of just you know almost like i call it and i know it's not but like mountain man business you know what i'm saying where it's like you don't whatever you whatever you're doing on your porch you don't question that and, and you don't talk about that so they might be like they're involved in weed or something like that but they're not gonna be talking about that you know what i'm saying they might not know 100 percent. like oh wait a second like they are the killers you know what i mean because of that kind of like you just keep your head down mind your own damn business in these parts kind of a thing right um okay so they said they're afraid for their lives. So once they move out to Alaska, Billy, both Billy and Angela's dad pass, right? At certain points. They don't even return home for that. And this is when really people start being like, huh? Like your dad died? You're not coming home? Like they are staying away. Okay. And so this starts to make people like, huh? They don't come home for the funerals, nothing. And the cops are like, this is suspicious. Like our eyes are, we're really focusing in on them more. Um, so the cops are like going through evidence, going through stuff, you know, doing all this stuff, you know, whatever they find this Walmart receipt. Okay, we're back to Walmart. Um, and it shows that the Wagners bought two pairs of new sneakers from Walmart right before the murders. So remember, we just talked about the one. Thank you again, Dwayne. So we just talked about this, right? So they so then of course with this, they go back over the video footage of this taking place and they have Angela on video buying the sneakers. Plain as damn day. Okay. Now, this is the part that gets me right here. I, and not, I'm not complaining, okay, obviously. Um, so, at one point, the Wagners come back to, what do you call it, Ohio, and to get more of their possessions. And they are stopped, pardon me, along the way. Like, at this point, the cops, I mean, they know, right? I mean, they don't know exactly the depth of this, but it's like they... 
they know that something with the Wagners, right? They've got this video. They got all this. So they stop them on the way in room. They intercept them. And Billy does not want to cooperate. Now, also remember, Billy is the one who had did not take a deal and is still waiting trial in 2024. You know, he's basically just like, my whole family are going to have to sit up here and tell on me and look me dead in the damn eye. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so. They deny, every, all of them deny everything. Well, Angela says she's going to talk. She's like, everyone hold my damn beer. I've got, I've got it, fam. I'm going to talk my ass out of this, and y'all too. So that episode ends, and we go into episode two, Raised to Kill is what it's called. So they're intercepted on their way, on the way, like in around Montana, on the way back to Ohio. They interview Angela, and she denies buying these shoes. Right, she's like, I didn't buy no shoes. Mm-mm, no, sir, not me. So then they hit her with the evidence, and they have to keep hitting her with it. It's like, well, we've got this receipt. I did, I didn't know. We have you on video with the shoes in your basket, the receipt in your damn purse. Okay, girl, like it's it's rap, you know. So She is such a bad liar, y'all. I mean, it's like in the world of this, it's like she's really bad at it, okay? So she's like, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I want an attorney. And I was like, that's probably the smartest thing she did that day, right? So the investigators start going over technology evidence, and they see that Hannah had been talking to people about issues with Jake and custody issues with Jake. So remember this. Remember, Jake is the Wagner son. Hannah is the Roden's daughter, one of the Roden family's daughter. Jake and Hannah have a kid together. Okay. So Jake and Hannah were together for two years before the birth of their daughter. Angela wants to call the shots around the house. But Hannah does not like this, and Jake is not isn't fully supportive of his mother. No, hold on, I'm sorry. Jake is in full support of his mother after the baby is born. Hannah wants to go back to work. She wants to go to school. She wants to keep kind of doing the right thing. Jake's like, no, absolutely not. You stay at home. You take care of the baby, and you do what I say. Essentially, and one person said... Um, And let me just finish reading this before I say that. A friend says that she felt like their relationship deteriorated because Hannah was more of a free roll person and he was controlling. Now, another person, before we go on to the next thing, basically said that it was like Jake was trying to make Hannah into his mother, right? Um, In the way of like, you you mimic this, okay? Um, he wanted to call the shots. A little mister, I still live at home with mom and dad, but I'm going to tell my woman what to do. Now, we will hear from numerous girls that have been in, the, you know, married into, dated into, babied into this family. And they all talk a horror stories about Angela, okay? Absolute horror stories about this woman. Thank you, Squinting Cat. I really appreciate it. It's never too late to arrive. You're here and we're happy for you. I do appreciate it, Squinting Cat. So. They um they do not have anything good to speak about Angela. And again, it reminds me so much of Goodnight Sugar Babe. The same kind of energy going on. Okay, so let's continue. So there's a physical altercation at one point between Hannah and Jake. And she takes the daughter and goes home to her own mother. Okay. And there was a verbal custody agreement. And basically, it's like they each get the the baby one week. Like, she has the baby one week, he gets the baby one week. And so this is how it is. However, the Wagoners don't want this, especially Angela. She want they don't want this. They want the baby. So in Ohio, and in most situations, you know this, unless there's some major drama going on with the mother, they're going to always side with the mother, right? I mean, there has to be some major stuff going on, you know, and this is no different. Um, she didn't have, you know, if she was trying to do the right thing, right? He didn't want her going to school and doing all this type of stuff. So, you know, this doesn't go over well at all, right? Um, wait, let me catch on. Where did I get it? I get the mother... Okay, so then eventually Hannah starts dating another guy, and she gets pregnant by him, but they break up, and she has the baby, I'm sorry, days before she's murdered. So this is the baby that is found in the bed next to her, and there's even more horror about that. We'll get to it. Okay, so 
Hannah, now this is at the center of this, okay? And we'll circle back around to it, but just remember this. So Hannah made a message on Facebook talking about they'll never get custody. She's referring to the Wagners. They'll have to kill me before they get that. Well, Angela Wagner had Hannah's password and would hack into her account and read her messages and saw this and screenshotted it. They have evidence of her doing this. And she uses this to be like, bam, here we go, everybody. This right here, right here. We have to, we cannot have this. We have to do something about it. Pardon me. Let me catch up here. Okay, we read that. So keep that in mind. We're going to circle back around to that level of evidence. Now, the narration, the narrative switches back over to Alaska. So they're back there. You know, we're, we're living in Alaska. We can't afford to live there anymore. So then they decide they're going to move back. And Jake gets a job, or Jake or George, I can't remember which one, and that, but he gets a job driving a truck. And the trucking company, remember, they're being watched this whole time. I was shocked they moved back. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I was absolutely absolutely shocked that they moved back um okay so the bci so the investigators get the trunking company to agree to wire tap the truck okay this will be the downfall i mean many other things but this is a huge part of it um okay where are we at uh so they're playing all these phone calls and it's like between angela and george or angela and jake and you hear all these conversations and they're all incredibly paranoid and they all are pointing fingers at each other like well this is going to be your fault if this happens blah, blah, blah. you know and even at one point they're like well probably the truck is even even uh wired you know i know they're listening and you're like yeah they are and yes your truck is wired you know, and the mom will be like, Angela at times will be like, um, what, you know, you need to, you know, don't talk about this on the phone. Don't talk about that on the phone or whatever. Right. And it's like, I mean, again, they had to be kicking themselves listening to this evidence. Right. Okay. So finally, eventually the cops are like, we've got all the stuff we need. We have all, we are very confident about this. We need around this, you know, uh, you know what show in. So they arrest Billy, George, Jake, and Angela. Now, this goes over like a lead balloon, right? And people, this is where uh, people are like questioning, like, do y'all got the right people? I mean, they're literally like, you arrested? Are you crazy? You know, there's, there's killers out in the loose here, right? They don't know yet, you know, because again, it's just, I mean, imagine like where you grew up, like families that get along or, or whatever, and they're, they're friends and they do this and they do that. You know what I'm saying? And then it turns out that one of them killed each other. Oh my God. So anyways, um, so other people say at first people question if they were really uh, guilty or not. I mean, these people were great friends together. At one point they fished together. They had family together. People were wondering if the cops were really onto the right people. So that was just, I'm just reading through my notes that I put there. Um, the Wagners are locked up and facing death penalty cases. And the prosecutor waits it out to see if someone will talk. Now this goes on for a while, y'all. Well, then finally, Jake Wagner pleads guilty in exchange for a life without parole to testify against his family. Kaboom, boom, boom. Okay, y'all. People and friends are and family are shocked. Okay. Because number one, he's writing to people from jail and talking, right? Okay. And the, like, you know, claiming innocence, doing all this. Um, and it's like, it's crazy. So one thing that's very interesting and tragic and just all around e is the fact of you're seeing family members turn on each other. This very tight knit family that had to be very tight knit to plan a crime like this and literally getting on the stand and just ratting each other out. Now, Jake will claim that he taught, please all. Jake claimed that in a letter to another family member that he personally talked to God, he heard God's voice 
and that God said that he is going to use them to prove his um, righteousness or something like that. And this, and I think I made a note about it, but I'm just thinking about it now, so I'll say it. And this family member is like, he does a lot of talking about God, but he really doesn't listen to God. Now does he? And the said family member eventually blocked his phone number coming from the jail. He was like, I cannot with you, right? So again, think of this family, Jake and Jake's at the center of this, right? It's his kid. Okay, he's going to be taking the stand and looking at his brother and looking at his father, which he hasn't had the father's trial yet. You know what I'm saying? We'll get to that in a second. So it's it's major. Okay, whoops. Okay, so in exchange for taking the death penalty off the table for the whole family and offering life without parole, he testified against the rest of the family. So part of him is also looking at it like he saved everybody, like he did something, right? Now, this is one thing that I was very curious with this, and I figured through craftiness they would be able to do this. But like once they're incarcerated, they can't communicate with each other legally. You know what I'm saying? Like they like they could get a friend or a friend or whatever or whatever to go do this, but like they can't call each other up. So I'm like, did he have any kind of word back from the family of Jake, take the deal and save our lives, do what you got to do. Or would he go into a blindly, like, I just have to make this decision and do what I know to do, you know, which was doing this. I'd be very curious. So anyways, so a friend recounts meeting Jake just a few weeks before the murder is and how Jake had a booth this is at that Dogwood Festival thing or some festival. Um, it was at the fair. I'm sorry, not the Dogwood Festival. Um, he had a booth set up at the fair and he held Hannah's new baby with her new man. And she's like, um, he knew that he was going to end up killing them. You know, he knew exactly what he was doing. And so this friend is like very upset about this. Right. Um, and it was, it was just so it's devastating to hear and like put that connection together. So Jake, you know, so in this all number one, they never found the murder weapons. Right. So Jake leads them, the cops to a pond on the Wagner's property to where the murder weapons were. And they were concreted in these buckets and they were at the bottom of the pond. These are guns and stuff like that. Welcome, Lynn Frank. I appreciate it. Um, OK, so then so this is going on. Right. So this triggers five months later, Angela confesses, pleads guilty. And she gets the best deal. She gets, she exchanges this all for a 30 year sentence, but she has to testify against her son. Now, little Miss Angela, we're going to talk about little Miss Angela here in a minute. Okay. When we just kind of, when we get to the notes and just kind of free talk or whatever, keep in mind, she, bam, okay, I'll testify against my son. This very manipulative, controlling person. Okay. Angela's half brother says that she had a hard life, was abused by the father. One thing that's at the center of this case is a lot of SA on the women of a variety of Angela, of other family members, of this type of stuff. And we're going to get to that in a second as to maybe some thoughts on why this was, you know, taking place, like a motivation for her. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so media is all over for this trial. George is facing eight counts of murder. The town wants answers. And we're talking about the brother, George. Okay, so it's fast forwarding now to September 2022. Okay. Opening statements. So we go into opening statements. They're like, the why, the why, the why. The state says this is not a crime of passion. These were planned for three months. But George and his by George and his family. Now the defense says that Jake and Angela destroyed George's life and that he had no motive. Which on a superficial level, it would seem, yeah, George doesn't have this isn't his baby, this isn't his wife or ex-wife, you know, whatever. But again, this family all operates together and moves together. They don't do any, they don't decide if they're having grits or eggs in the morning without consulting each other. Um so, and they all live together. Okay, so um, he says that the only tie is that he's a Wagner. The defense says that Jake and Angela are liars and murderers. And the defense says that no reliable evidence is there to show that he was even at the crime scene. 
And it does make you kind of wonder in these type of situations, like of getting roped into something. However, this is one of those states where you don't have to pull the trigger to be charged. Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. Please don't. Okay. So there's three different type of guns that are recovered from the pond. And the defense will say that the state believes that there were three different killers because of this. Billy, George, and Jake Wagner, the men of the Wagner family. Now, the state says you don't have to shoot someone to be guilty. That's what we just covered. Jake and Angela both take the stand in this case. Okay. Jake writes Chris Newcomb, who is Angela's... Hold on. Chris... So Jake writes Chris, who is Angela's half-brother from jail, and this is what I talked about earlier, and says, God spoke to him and is going to use all of them to bring his name to glory. Chris says he does, he talks a lot about God, but doesn't think he's actually listening. He doesn't think that Jake feels bad, and he says that he blocked Jake's phone calls, you know, finally. So, excuse me. Fast forward to October 2022. Tabitha is George Wagner's ex-wife, and she takes the stand. This is bad, y'all, okay? Um, They were a simple, happy couple, and they lived with Angela and Billy after the wedding, and soon after, she had a son. Tabitha had a son. Angela wore... Okay, so this is interesting. Thank you, Dwayne. Um, This is very interesting. Angela wore white to the wedding. Okay. Now I think uh, in a lot of areas or whatever, there can be kind of taboo of like what another female is going to wear to a wedding as far as like upstaging the bride and, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, what type dress you wear, like you're, you know, it's like the bride's day or whatever. So one of the girls says that in this area, and, and I don't know if this is the general superstition everywhere, but basically it's like, if you wear white to the wedding it's basically a low key way of saying you don't support the wedding. And here's Angela wearing that, right? Um, so Angela wore white to the wedding, and she says everyone kind of gave her side eye because locally it's a superstition that if you wear white to somebody's wedding, that means you don't really wish them well. Now, Tabitha testified to how much control Angela had over the household. This is creepy as hell, what I'm about to say, y'all. This is the ick right here, y'all, okay? Where to go? Tabitha says that at the end of the day, Angela would come into their bedroom, Tabitha and George's bedroom, and ask Tabitha Tabitha to leave the bedroom so that she could scratch George's back and talk about the day. And then when the, they're asking her or the state of the defense is like, well, how often did this happen? Um, she goes, every day. Can you imagine how creepy that would be? Like if you were her, okay. And you're like, you want me to leave? It's almost like that Sex in the City episode where the dude's mom would come in while he's taking a bath and talk to her. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, that is so creepy. Okay? And it's just like, but it just shows you, like, what? Like, the, the level of manipulation that Angela was trying to instill and the control and the power. It's like, they're a married couple. You know what I mean? And, like, you're trying to do that. Like, mm-mm. No, it, it gets worse. Okay, so I don't know where she go. Okay, so then, so she asked her to leave so she can scratch George's back. Okay, Tabitha says that while she was living at the Wagner's, she was not allowed to visit her family. They were not allowed to visit her. She couldn't have a phone. She couldn't use the internet, and Angela had insurance out on her. I mean, y'all, okay. This part right here, y'all. I'm gonna say the uh, you you're gonna get where I'm going with this. Angela also controlled their sex life, and Angela told them both George and her that she, meaning Tabitha, was not allowed to give him BJ's, um, because she would go to hell for it. They were only allowed to have relations to have children. Like that's that's it, right? Now. I'm sitting here like, I mean, how does she, but she seems like the type that would try and monitor it, right? 
Because I'm like, what? Anyways, I had so many questions about that part. But I mean, that's the, the level you're talking about here. Okay. So eventually she and George have an altercation and he hits her. And Angela threatens her and she leaves. She was basically like, I was afraid they were going to kill me. Like, you know, this was like getting crazy. Okay. So. Now, her and George have a kid together, right? So the Wagners trick her into signing a custody agreement with the, for their son. They basically lie to her, and then it's a full that she's signing over all her custody for her son to them. So they steal the kid from her, basically, is what we're getting at here. Okay, so and then Angela becomes his mom. Okay, it gets creepier. Elizabeth. I don't know where is it. Elizabeth, a, a girl, a woman named Elizabeth, Jake Wagner's ex from Alaska, testifies that she was from Alaska. She goes by Beth. Okay, so Jake and Beth got married in 2018. So remember, they moved to Alaska in 2017. They spend like a little bit of time there, whatever, whatever. Um, he gets married. Angela was not happy because remember, they have, so let's do a recap real quick. This is after the murders. Jake has custody. He has the baby, right? Um, the child, whatever. He gets married. This child only knows Angela as mommy at this point, right? That's mommy. Jake gets married to Beth, and now there's competition, okay? So, Angela was not happy that now that Beth is the mother figure. And there's a recorded phone call between Jake and his mother, Angela. And Angela is literally like so pissed off. She's like about the child believes Beth. The child, you know, wants to be around Beth more than her. And she's like, oh, I'm just the grandmother. I'm not the mom. I'm just the grandmother. Bah, 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 bah. And Jake is finally like, that's right. You're the grandmother. You're not the mom. You are the grandmother. And it just, it's so eye-opening to, to see the dynamics of what was going on in that house. I mean, this woman was unhinged. And again, it reminds me of Sugar Babe. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely just crazy. Okay. So yeah, he yells at her. He tells her that she is the grandmother. She's not the baby's mom. Also, remember, they all know behind the scenes what they already did. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. Okay. So she, meaning Beth, the ex-wife who's on the stand, also speaks about Angela wanting all of her personal information. Like, literally, like, I'll hold your social. I'll do this. I'll do that. I am in control of you. It feels very trafficy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. She says the family dynamic was they went everywhere together, ate all their meals together, and made all their decisions together. One thing that's very important for the state during this case to do is to form the evidence that shows that's how they operated as like a, a crime family, basically, but not just a crime family, but we all decide what dinner is for. We all decide what this is for. We all consult with this. I mean, for God's sakes she's telling the wife to get out of the bedroom so she can rub her son's back every night. I mean, that's all we needed to hear. Okay. Done. Immediately done. Guilty. Slam the damn gavel down. Call it good. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just based on that alone. Uh, love is a four letter word. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Um, and okay. Now this gets even worse. I mean, it just keeps getting worse before it gets better. So, Angela accuses Beth of s Jake's daughter. Angela is able to convince Jake and the rest of the men in the family that this is a true scenario. We need to be worried about this. Jake confronts Beth about this. And he's like, I need you to, you need to be honest with me. You need to tell me what's going on. If you did do this, if you did do this to my daughter... The only thing we should do is the only thing proper to do is to string you up and to kill you out in that damn barn over there, you know, and if I don't do it, my brother will do it. And if my brother doesn't do it, my mom will do it. So you need to be real damn honest if you did this to my daughter or not. Well, 
you already know this girl's like, uh, peace. <laughs> I'm out. Okay. I, I mean, we'll get to this in a second. Okay. About my thoughts on Angela and what she's able to do. So you're listening to this and you're like, Oh my God. And even the, def even the state will say at times where they're like, these are what we call living victims. They just happen to have not been killed. You know what I'm saying? They're speaking for Hannah. They are talking to us what Hannah's experience was probably like because she's not here to do it, right? These victims are. Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate it. Um, so then let's go back to the evidence, the case. Remember, George is on trial. Family is testifying against him. He says he's totally innocent. We're talking about the son, George. A key piece of evidence is that George's credit card, he bought a phone jammer a month before the murders. This is used to prevent people from making phone calls and things of this nature. Now, the defense will say, and I get this is a logical thing from the defense. The defense will say, we don't have him on camera buying that. Angela was in possession of everybody's credit cards. She had access to all that information. It was very normal for her to spend money on these things and nobody know, you know, she's the killer. You know, that's what we've been saying. Right. So, and I can, I mean, once you hear about Angela, this makes sense, but don't worry. Don't worry. He's got what's coming to him. Um, Jake takes the stand, and I remember when this part went down, but he has the option to not be on camera, and he chooses for that. Y'all, we were bitter over this. Oh, thank you. Where'd you go? Thank you, Mary Rose. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Um, He says he doesn't want to be on camera. He doesn't want to be recorded. Mind you, he's going to be in that courtroom looking at his brother. Although I believe he didn't make eye contact. I certainly want to have. I would just have a damn bag over my head. Um, okay. So Jake outlines what happened. He he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all what happened. He says that the plan started the day they came across Hannah's Facebook message. Remember the one that Hannah said they'll have to kill me before they get custody of the baby? That Angela hacked into her account over. And Angela said they have to do something over it. Well, that Billy comes up with the idea. The father comes up with the idea that they have to kill Hannah. Only logical thing to do here. But then it's like, well, wait a minute. The family is going to retaliate the other rodents. If we do that, it's going to be like a massacre against us. So the only logical thing to do in the scenario is to just kill everyone in their family and whoever else happens to be there makes complete sense right angela has been able to convince this whole family that the baby is being essayed they have to protect this baby there's no other choice here we are we've got to wipe out this whole family so the narration switches back over to family members other members of the family and whatnot and they say that Jake always used to brag. Okay, this is it's very telling. They were like, yeah, Jake used to always brag. And he was like, yeah, once you're saved, you can do whatever you want to. You know, after that, you just come and ask for forgiveness and you're good. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. Like, you've got a free pass. And as I was listening to this, I was like, sadly, there's probably a lot of people that think that. That, you know, so to him, I'm, go kill eight people. I just ask for forgiveness and it's all good can't roll my damn eyes hard enough on that one right there jesus okay anyways so jake says we're back now to the thing or whatever um to the on the stand so jake says that billy jake and george are on the way to commit these crimes and billy stops and he's like okay boy boys this is your last chance boys you boys want to do it and jake's basically like yeah let's we've got to we we have to do this right so he persuades them, the dad and all them to continue. So they head over to Chris Sr.'s. Billy got Chris Sr. to come to the door, and George was supposed to take one shot, but he froze. So Jake takes the gun and he shoots Chris. Billy then makes his way in and shoots Chris Sr. and Gary Roden. 
then Jake will say that Billy comes out, arms in the air, absolutely freaking out that he just killed his own best friend. And then they drag the bodies back to the bedroom. So imagine that right there. Imagine that right there. You've just gone in and killed and slaughtered your best friend. Zero warning, right? Not that warning makes it okay, right? But just, you know what I'm saying? Um, so then over at Frankie's, and you know what? Hold on. While we're doing this, let's put up the family map. Let's do this. Please hold. Where to go? And I'm dreaming of you tonight. Okay. I said, please hold. That is right. I said, please hold tonight. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have this up here now. So let's let's just let's, let's get with the program, everybody. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me get back over here. Where did y'all go? Here you are. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so they go to Frankie's house. Now, I don't know. I need to go over the screen so I can see it because my eyes aren't good. Okay, so at the top, we see here Chris Roden. Remember, ex wife, ex husband. Then you have Christopher Roden Jr. down there. So the, they, they are murdered. Okay. Okay, they forget. Then at Frankie's, he goes and shoots Frankie and Hannah. No, he goes and shoots Frankie. Now remember, there's two Hannahs, right? There's Hannah Gilly and there's Hannah Rodham. So Frankie and Hannah are together, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. They have a kid together. He goes in there. Frankie moves around. He kills Frankie. Hannah moves. He kills her too. The baby is in the middle of them covered in blood. Now, people are basically talking about who were in the court or whatever. Like, he was talking about it like he was reciting a recipe. Absolutely no emotion. Absolutely nothing there. Okay? So, Jake says at Dana's, he shot her five times in the head. And then he goes into Hannah Roden. Now, this is who he has the baby with. This is the part, this is trigger warning right here, y'all. This is trigger warning. Okay, this is bad. But it is it's it is what it is. I mean, it's this is how vile these people are. Okay, anyways. So he goes in there. She's breastfeeding their, the, the new baby. He shoots her, and then he rolls her body in such a way so the baby will have access to continue breastfeeding because he was afraid that the baby would starve to death. When I heard that, I was like, what? Now, when they find this little baby, the baby is covered from head to toe in blood, okay? And you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the show Dexter. I know I said this earlier about something, but it reminds me of the show Dexter, if you are familiar with that show and how Dexter was found. Um, it's I don't know if he thought he was doing something with that, where I'm just like, what? This, what? I pray to God this child can get through childhood without learning this fact about themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's awful. Okay, where we go? Then Jake then shoots Chris Jr. multiple times in the head. Okay, so fast forward to Angela. Angela Wagner is going to testify against her own damn son. The son who she would go in and scratch his back at night and make his wife leave the bedroom. Okay. So she doesn't want to be recorded either, of course. Now, she said that she personally had a conversation with George, her son, who's saying he had nothing to do with this about the crimes and if he wanted to go through with them. She also said that when Billy, Jake, and George left the house, she sent text messages from the boys' phones, Jake, George, as if they were like at home texting. So it would look like they were at home, their phones kind of ping, that kind of a thing, right? Um, and then she went to bed, apparently slept quite well. So she wouldn't even look at her own son while testifying. They said, again, I, I wouldn't either in this situation. Um, Angela said that the motive was to protect Jake's daughter, not so much custody. 
Jake and Angela are convinced the daughter is being essayed, but there is no evidence to per, to support this. Okay. A family member says every time Jake and George got a girlfriend, it was the same story that they were S.A. in the child. So this, wait, hold on, what's going on here? Um, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so there we go. So this was the thing that the mother would do. And we'll get this before we get to that, because George will take the stand in his own defense in a second. So the thing that the mother would do is, number one, she allegedly was, you know, essayed herself and whatnot. So she seemingly had this thing uh, that's going to happen to anybody and everybody. Now, I can 100 percent respect that notion. I get that if that was your reality, I get why you would then think this. Right. However, there's also this other stuff going on with her with this like super intense controlling and all this type stuff. So I don't think it's all just that, but basically they were like, she would use this narrative to kind of control everybody. Um, and just kidding says this is being a boy mom taken to the ultimate degree. I mean, literally, right? Literally a hundred percent. So, Yes. So, okay. It's the same story. All that. Okay. So George Wagner takes the stand. Now in this scenario, you basically have to. Your mother and brother have gotten up there after you've said you had nothing to do with this at all. And they're like, oh, yeah, totally, absolutely talked to him about this. 100% no. I was at home using his phone. Guilty. So he says his mother is over a. And Frankie were best friends. Another friend says she went fishing with him. So this girl saying she went fishing with George like a month after the murders. And she was like, George was no longer there. It was like this blank soul was like just, he was gone. You know, well, obviously why he, I mean, he, you saw, if you see something and do something like that, that's going to mess you up, right? Now we're getting ready to end my notes here and we'll just kind of, no, no. Yeah, are we still frozen? Please hold. Please continue. Okay, so the sound is on. Continue to hold. Okay, so let's wait. We're just going to wait it out like we did before, y'all. Tell me when, number one, you can see me. But number two, if you stop hearing me, okay? Um, so I'm just going to keep talking for now. It'll come back up. I have internet. There must be something wrong. I don't know if it's YouTube. I don't know if it's my internet connection. Um, but if you stop hearing me, just say that. Um, and we'll go on there. So, but George is like this blank soul. Okay. Um, and, and with all understanding reason. Now, George says, he didn't even know that Jake and his dad left the house to go do these murders. I mean, he denies everything to that degree where he's like, I, I didn't I literally did not know this. Um, well, this does him no good. Um, hold on one second. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Emily, send me a I'm doing some good poses. I'm like this in the frozen thing. <laughs> um that's so cute thank you emily um he's guilty on all counts they, they, they come back guilty and all that billy wagner like we discussed in the beginning still has not gone to trial it's supposed to happen maybe this year but we'll see um so those are the notes from start to finish of it now let's kind of talk some context of it that we saw here okay so literally hearing the narrative of the mother okay i'm back yay awesome thanks for hanging in there everybody so hopefully that's just how this will go and freeze up again um thanks for hanging in there thank you emily for sending that thing the picture so i kind of know what i'm looking like um the mother clearly major toxic stuff going on here this whole thing of like oh you know they're they're harming the babies and, da, 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 and we have to gain control and 
she wanted to run the roost, everything all the way down to sex life, to everything, right? And these girls, uh, the other ones, not Hannah Roden, obviously, they're lucky to be alive. So the fact that they were that drunken with power and entitlement that they thought they could literally kill the entire family and get away with it is repulsive. Now, once Jake got up there and told these details of what went down, talking about he killed her breastfeed and uh, rolled her over so the baby could get to her breast, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, these, this is twisted stuff father killing his best friend i mean these are sick monsters okay literally no reason for this it's literally a made-up reason as to why this took place and i think that it's like this level where you see these cases like goodnight sugar baby where that one of the people becomes fixated on a child and part of me and getting control of everyone's children and kind of running the show in that way. And it's like, for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, for what? Now, again, like I said, this documentary, while it gave some context into the relationships, and that was the most interesting thing to me, there's so much more to this case. I mean, so much more. I mean, these entire channels dedicated to this case, right? So while, you know, I'm not trying to doll the documentary and be like, oh, da, da, because again, to me, the biggest ticket in this documentary was hearing how the family operated the Wagners and hearing from people who were inside that family. Again, if you watched the trial, you would have, you know, probably heard a lot of this or whatever. But if you didn't, then... You know, there's this. And again, it's a very quick overview. Now, also, like I said, it looks like Stephanie Harlow and Derek have part two up of covering this case. So, you know, it's like hours long, all po bar both parts of one and two. And they are going to do an, uh, a huge deep dive on this, which is what a case like this needs. You know, there's a lot of these cases that we go over that you can watch the documentary and be like, you know what? I'm looking for the 10 cent version. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this definitely does that. Like, this gives you the overview. Um, but it's just, it's this case, there, there's so much more to it and so many other people involved in it, these little nuances and stuff. Now, hold on where, um, hold on where I want to put this one. Okay. So I hope Angela J. Caff, um, hello, how are you? I hope Angela never gets out of prison. She's the mastermind. I agree. I felt like she got the sweetest deal. She's going home at some, she'll be old. She'll be real old by then, but she's got to go home date. 30 years for, now granted, was she at the crime scene? No, but she might have well have been. Um, And then, hold on, Irene. Hello, Irene. Irene says, Jake's ex-wife had a lot to say about, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, she, uh, they, the ex-wives that got up there, Tabitha and Beth, I think her name was, and the stuff, <clears throat> pardon me, the stuff that they told, I mean, Y'all, they painted a dire picture of this family. I mean, it was like, yikes, okay? Absolutely yikes. Now, Mary Rose says she'll be 80 by then. And my question, too, is, you know, when she gets out, Angela, where is she going? Like, where, like, where is she going at this point? You know what I'm saying? Because if you think, think about a 30-year chunk in your life, whether it's ages 1 through 30, 20 through 50, 30 through 60, 10 through 40. I can't believe I'm being able to math like that that quickly, even though it's not complicated. Um, that's a lifetime. Look at how much life can happen in that. So she's going to be behind bars and that so much can go on. Right. And now that everybody knows like everything that went on, you know, my God. Right. Um, I watched this on, um, where'd you go? Uh, Carolina country check. I watched this on, uh, Peacock. And Irene says, my heart broke for Jake and George's exes. They were carrying a lot of pain. Oh, I agree. I think they lived in a nightmare. I think they lived when they were living in the house um, with Angela and the family. I think um, they were living in a nightmare. And again, they're lucky uh, to be alive, uh, in my opinion, because I think if Angela had her sights, well, she was able to still tap with this kid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what they were doing. It was like their sons were going out, getting girls pregnant, having children, and the mother was stealing them. I mean, it's really twisted. It's really twisted. And yeah, people saying that she might not survive, speaking of Angela in her prison time, she might not. 
I mean, she didn't make any friends, right? This is major. I mean, you got to remember, they took the entire Rodan fan, not the entire, but eight of the Rodans are gone. I mean, they've devastated a family. And somebody made a good point in this, saying this is a generational crime that will go on generations and generations and generations. Um, and it's so true. So, oh, thank you, Dwayne. He's gifted another five memberships. I appreciate it. Enjoy, everybody. Enjoy. Um, so it's going to go on and on. So there could be somebody in prison that's like, mm -mm, we're getting back at her. Certainly like with Jake and George, the fact that they did not kill babies is one thing that in their favor, I guess you could say, but nonetheless, all the innocent people, I mean, they killed innocent men and women, right? I mean, one of those kids, was, they killed the dude was 16 years old, you know, I mean, he was a minor. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. And then he, also this too the personality types now george seems to be the more quiet evil then in nirvana i wonder too and thanks for the super chat i wonder where all the babies are now i imagine if other family didn't take them i imagine they're in some kind of care right or if the spe the ones where the, the 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 mother is surviving you know what i'm saying like i wonder in that scenario um excuse me but it's 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 complicated and it's heartbreaking and again the trial the case is still going on i think that billy is not going to plea out or take any deals because he's kind of probably mr tough man and basically like he's going to be like no y'all have to get up here and testify against me y'all are going to have to earn my life conviction you know what i'm saying um so and again and this is one thing that blows my mind, I guess. And I don't know. Um, I don't understand this part. So Jake's going to get up there and testify and do all this stuff to take the death penalty off the table and get life without parole. For what? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to do all that to get the death penalty off the table. I would have just been like, especially if I knew I did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, something this horrible. Thanks, Brianna. I would have been like... <laughs> you know, okay, I'm good. Send me to the chamber. You know what I mean? Like, why would you want to live in prison the rest of your life? I don't get that part. Um, I don't get that part at all. But, I mean, teach their own, right? I mean, that could be, you know, that human drive to stay alive and do that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. So, um, we'll see. Now, this is one thing that I'm curious about for everybody here. Um, this is for next week. What do y'all tell me what you think about this? And let me pull it up so I can say the name correctly. What do y'all think about Selena and Yolanda, the secrets between them? The one about, you remember Selena, who was murdered by Yolanda, and she's now done a docuseries. What, what, what do we think about this? What do we? What, what, what do we think about this now? Um, anybody anybody out there? What do y'all think? Um, those are crazy. I watched that. Was it good, Wilma? Isn't that right? How murderers are always afraid to die. I know, right, Mandy? It really is. That was a crazy case. It really was. I, I haven't seen it, but I keep seeing talks of it. And, I mean, part of me is just like, yeah, the singer RJB. And I'm like, um, you know, I'm like, I want to it's not that I want to hear what Yolanda has to say, because I think she's, I, the fact that she's getting out is beyond me. Okay. I don't know Yolanda, but I'm not sure how true that is. I heard it's a platform with Yolanda. I heard that, hold on, wait, Chinchilla was good. Hold on, wait, so hold on, please hold. Um, I think people would kill that woman. They love Selena. I know that's the thing. I mean, people love Selena. I mean, it still do. Right. And the, the, another pointless crime and i'm just like there's nothing she can say nothing she can say you know what i'm saying like absolutely nothing don't pick up the phone oh god oh no usa that's crazy oh, oh my god okay please hold 
y'all i mean i tell you if you have not listened to this on tiktok you go y'all dedicate eight hours dedicate eight hours and listen to who the f did i marry on tiktok it is so good okay so let's do this for next week let's do the selena documentary documentary i can't even say it right it's on oxygen i believe so i have to figure out how to watch it um but we'll talk about that i just i i want to watch it i want to watch it um at first i wasn't going to but now i'm like i want to watch it um just because i'm am curious to see what she'll say uh so let's see oh Oh, hold on. Okay. Miss Independent Way. I for, when you said this one at first, I was like it's familiar. And now I'm like, okay, so we talked about this a long time ago, but we might have to do this one again. Maybe after the Selena ones, like in two weeks. Y'all, don't pick up the phone was one of the most off the damn chain things I've seen in a long ass time okay i i can't it's just i was watching that like the things that people would do i'm like seriously like why would you even think that that was okay well the cop told me to do it really absolute bonkers this one was right up there with um in plain sight okay in plain sight we'll we'll probably revisit those because it wasn't like now that i've started doing these on a weekly basis this was like way before i think um so we might revisit that one but yes for next week we're doing selena and yolanda um and uh and we're gonna do that one okay let me ask y'all this real quick does anybody know this is a ticket? So we're we're kind of ending that. We're just going into some random, just left and right talking. So if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Uh, but we're going to go in just a couple of minutes. But before we do, so yes, yeah, Selena and Yolanda is next week, um, and we will watch that. Uh, so PTSD, the the one that, that you're talking about is called Don't Pick Up the Phone. I'm not sure what platform it's on, but it is next level. Okay. We'll definitely do it now that I've been reminded of it because it's been so long. Um, it's one of those that I have to watch every now and then just to like remind myself of like, Paul, it's not too bad. Thank you, Mary. Okay. So has anybody, first of all, there's the who the F did I marry on TikTok? Has anybody also been following? And I'm gonna die live. Been following Gina from Chick Fil. <laughs> Has anybody been following Gina from Chick Fil A, the No Chick Fil A Sauce Girl on TikTok? If you know what I'm talking about, like just let me know in the comments. If you know what I'm talking about, um, I updated Chris Rogers' case with Brooks. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Hold on, don't watch that now. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Okay. I'm going to play it for you in a second. Okay. Okay. So let me do this. This is really all this is is this girl who did this TikTok. She works at Chick fil A. She makes this face. And her sister came in and recorded her doing an order. And when I talk, it went viral. And the poor girl, first of all, then her account got banned. Then, yeah, so Amy, she was hired back, it sounds like. She got fired, but then hired back. It's crazy. And it's all over this one, I mean, literally this whole thing. I'm going to pull it up, so please hold. Please hold. I'm gonna please hold. Can I hold? Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to find it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna let it play a couple of times so you can hear it. <laughs> yeah. 
Y'all, when I tell you I've watched this thing a thousand, a million times and literally pee in my pants every time, it's, it goes super viral. You already know Chick-fil-A wasn't <laughs> You already know Chick-fil-A was pissed. Okay, now hold on. Okay, so then this is the next one that they did once her real account came out. So here's this one. <laughs> it's just this face that she makes. So, and then here's the longer version of it. Yeah, I I can't. Okay, I can't. Oh my god. Okay. Oh. So I yeah, I'm not lying. I have cried laughing over this for like two or three days now, and been following it. And then it's just like, oh my god. You know, she gets banned from TikTok. Then she gets fired. Now she's back. Now her TikTok is coming. It's just been this crazy thing. And it's just so funny the public's reaction because at first people were like, <laughs> people were like what's wrong with her and then when it came out it's like she's like it's just this face <laughs> make and that was my sister recording it oh my gosh y'all i cannot y'all it has provided the most laughter for me i mean i just oh my god y'all oh my god y'all okay so before we go we're gonna watch it one more time so we can all just get a good laugh out of it <laughs> Let's listen to it one more time. <laughs> it's the audacity where she's just like, no Chick fil A sauce. <laughs> You know, and that's what she's thinking. Like, if you want buffalo sauce, no Chick Fil A sauce. So she's the no, Ch she's Gina, the no Chick Fil A sauce girl. But this is what's so funny about TikTok, where a person can go viral. Like it is so true. Like you literally get your five minutes of fame on TikTok. Like you go viral. All we know this girl is as Gina, the no Chick Fil A sauce girl, <laughs> in that face. <laughs> Oh my god, and that face. And the person who added the gunshot effects to it was like, Psh. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, y'all, I cannot. Oh, I will never delete the app. I will never delete that app. Okay. Woo. Okay. So, y'all, first and foremost, thank you, Emily, for being here. Uh, I hope you feel better. I, you, we, this is a long one. Thank you for being here and hanging out. Please get some rest. Um, Chrissy Lee, if you're still here, I'm glad that you're back from the hospital. Uh, Dwayne, thanks for all the gifting of memberships. And thank you, everybody, for joining and hanging out. Remember, next week is Selena and Yolanda. I'll, as we get closer, I'll announce whether it's Saturday or Sunday night. I'm not sure yet. Probably going to be Sunday night again. Um, and that's it. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. I love all of y'all. Thank you very much for being here. Everyone give Emily a old round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let those bed bugs bite. I'll see y'all next.